in association with Dubai Tourism and Commerce Marketing. I'm in a place where anything is possible. One of the fastest growing cities in the world. Welcome to the most exciting city in the Middle East, Dubai. Less than 50 years ago, Dubai was still a small fishing village at the edge of the desert. Today, Dubai is a modern city with over 2 million inhabitants. It offers traditional Arabic culture with Western influences. The city attracts countless people from all corners of the world. They are all chasing their own Dubai dream. In order to find the best spots, Lorda has asked two real Dubai experts to show her around. Marwan Al Awadi was born and raised in Dubai. He is a successful TV and radio personality. <laughs> and Tom Urquhart, a British journalist who has been living and working in Dubai since 2001 as a television presenter and radio host. Welcome to Dubai. My name is Beatrice. I'm Marhaba service agent. I will assist you through all formalities. Please have a seat in the baggage. Marhaba in Arabic means welcome. And what a welcome it is. The Marhaba Gold Meet and Greet service takes you through the entire airport arrival process from fast track clearance through arrivals to helping with transfers, baggage and family travel. Marhaba ensures a swift, smooth and safe passage through the airport. Visitor mobile line, please. Dubai is a major hub connecting the world, and staying connected is no problem at all. Welcome to Dubai. I can't wait to explore this city. Dubai is located on the center west coast of the United Arab Emirates. In order to get an idea of how incredibly huge Dubai is, Marwan already has a surprise in store for Lorda. All right, so this is one of my favorite things to do, is to get a view from up in the sky on a sea wing seaplane. Have you done this before? No, I haven't, but I'm sure you have. Being a celebrity here, I guess it's the norm. Well, it's your first time and you're going to love it. Please. I look forward to it. Go ahead. All right, have a nice flight. Really looking forward to it. Enjoy. As soon as you take off, you immediately see the city's extraordinary location in between the desert and the sea. You see that over there, Lourdes? That's the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest building. Wow. Flying along the gigantic skyscrapers and the top view over the islands make for a unique experience. Thank you, thank you. That's How was that? Great. Amazing, well, I right? I loved it, loved it. Thank you. <laughs> so good. In Dubai, people love sports. Particularly, various equestrian sports are incredibly popular. Most countries get to play polo on horseback, but here there is a special variant, camel polo. Gulf Ventures offers camel polo, which adds an Arabic twist to traditional polo. Camel polo is a unique and sometimes hilarious experience. You know the part of winning teams. You know, you have to score maximum three goals. The game is for 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, who scored maximum three goals first is the winning team. You will learn the basics here, so no previous riding experience is necessary. This looks like fun. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes. I'm Let's ready. go. Ready? Camel polo is quite a recent invention but the sport is becoming increasingly popular, not only with tourists. Locals also love camel polo, and the sport has already gathered an impressive fan base. I just learned that the rules for camel polo are similar to regular polo. The aim is to get the small ball into the goal, but the only real difference is that camels cannot maneuver themselves with the same ease as horses do. And then it's time to play. 
Thank you, Samir. Thank you. That was a lot of fun, and you did a great job too. In the heart of the city, you'll find two neighborhoods, each with a very distinct character. On the one side, there's downtown with all its iconic sites, and on the other side, the business heart of the city, the DIFC. The modern architecture in the area also really captivates the mind and the imagination. This is where Lorda meets up with Tom, with a delicious cup of coffee in style with the district. So Tom, this is the famous gate. Yeah, one of those buildings that's synonymous with Dubai and the rapid growth of Dubai as well. Uh, a free zone within the city dedicated to all the financial institutions and the tertiary industries that feed into it. And I believe they call this DAFC a city within a city? Yeah, nice way of putting it, because it's not just about the financial area and being the financial district. There's also a great coming together of art galleries down here. There's some great restaurants as well with some big names and big brands and some big uh, celebrity chefs behind them. So you've got the meals and the deals all happening in the same place. Absolutely. I think it's quite clever as well that they do that, dragging people here at night when usually a financial district is quite quiet and dead yeah. at night. Yeah, because so often in other parts of the world you see those sort of districts just go dead as a dodo, very quiet of mm. an evening or a weekend, whereas here there's always something going on, there's always some sort of activity. So yeah, you're right, this is DIFC and this is where the stock market is housed and all the financial institutions that feed into that. So it's a real hub of activity during the day. And the, night. the Burj Khalifa is no less than 828 meters high. Lorda and Tom head up to take a look at the special panoramic observatory for visitors. Wow. wow, what an amazing view. Stunning, isn't it? I'm going to have to take a picture of this. That is a very impressive view. Gorgeous. So, yeah, so it just gives you a sort of alternative perspective, doesn't mm. it? You know how we've been sort of going around the city seeing it. So you've got the, uh, the palm, palm Jumeirah at the end there, the Burj Al Arab on the coast, which 15 years ago uh, was, uh, was open for the first time, so it would have been very different from here. And just over here behind me here is the world development as well which of course you can see from up top and up here, you get a good perspective on it. Fantastic, it looks like we're right <laughs> in the center of Dubai. Yeah, it's a really good way because not only do you see the sort of development here, but you also get a sort of idea of the, uh, the, the, the vast expenditure of land that uh, there, there is out there. It's great, but it's a bit scary up here, Tom. Really? Yeah. You, you're okay with heights A little though, bit you? afraid of heights. A little bit? A little bit. Now yeah. you tell us. Yeah. You can enjoy the stunning views on the observation deck on the 124th floor and at the Burj Khalifa Sky Experience on the 148th floor at a height of 555 meters. Thanks, Tom. That was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Not at all. Amazing to think we were just up there a minute ago. It is really impressive. Back down here, feet on the ground as well. Plenty of opportunities. You like to shop, yeah? I love to shop. You've got traditional options down here in the souk area. You've got the world's largest shopping mall there. I can't bear shopping, so I'm going to have to say goodbye. Okay? You're sure you don't want to join me? Catch up later on. No right. worries. Okay. Well, thanks Enjoy. for showing me around. Bye. Located in the heart of downtown Dubai, Souk Al Bahar adds an old market flair to shopping. Hello. Mm -hmm. And that one also peanuts. Do you want a taste? Could I have a pound of those, please? That one, no doubt. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. The Dubai Mall is the largest mall in the world. Here, there are no less than 1,200 shops. For anyone who loves shopping like me, this is truly paradise, and the choices are really incredible. The mall is home to virtually all major brands and offers everything you can imagine. Wow, only in Dubai can you find a gold Lamborghini in a shopping mall. This is pretty nice. The Dubai mall has three food courts, a gold souk, a cinema, an ice rink and many other forms of entertainment.
Shopping less than 10 metres away from a shark, where else can you experience that? The district Dera is the original centre of the city. In the past, all the trading took place here along the Dubai Creek. A trip with an authentic Dao is something you can't miss. There is probably one of the most important areas of uh, Dubai is where all the trade started, you know. People from different countries would bring all their items here to sell and some stuff was uh, taken from Dubai to their countries as well. And one of my favorite things I like to do when I come here is you take a look around you and you see all the old abras, some of the old buildings. Absolutely. But then you also have like new buildings, you know, you have the Chamber of Commerce over there. And of course, a great view of the entire Absolutely. Dubai skyline Fantastic as well. Fantastic view of the skyline. Deira Port still is an active spot in Dubai today. All kinds of products are arriving and shipped out especially for the nearby souks. So this is the spice souk over here. It's a popular destination for the tourists. They, they love coming here because it's one of our, you know, signature souks or markets sure. over here. You come here and then all the spices, and they come from all over the world, from India, Iran, uh, and some of them are from here in the UAE as well. As you can see, it's been renovated, but it still has that feeling of, you know, an old souk or an old market. Apart from the spice souk, you will also find the Dera Gold souk. There is still a lot of trade going on. But because of its historical nature, it also attracts many tourists. Would you like me to buy you anything from here? I would here? love you to buy me something yeah, from here. What would you here? like? Just pick <laughs> anything of your choice. <laughs> Dera offers much more sightseeing. For example, visit the clock tower, Al Riga Road, Al Mamzar Beach Park, and many more attractions. So what would you recommend to do in Deira at night? Uh, there's actually a lot to do in Deira. It's old Dubai, so you know you can see the gold souk, you can see the spice souk. Um, and also one great thing to do is if you want to get some food and you want to be on the water, Bateau Dubai gives you a great experience. Uh, you get a great view of the city as well at nighttime, so I think that's probably your best option. Yeah, it sounds amazing. I really look forward to seeing the skyline from the distance on the boat. I think I'll try that tonight. Yeah, I think you're going to enjoy it. And I can't believe you're not taking me with you. <laughs> well, you never know. You might change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> the city has a completely different face after sunset. True to form, Dubai has its own special way to experience the night. On the Bateau Dubai, you can enjoy live music. Sounds like music to my ears, and wow, what an amazing view and skyline. I'm enjoying the beautiful Dubai skyline while the chef prepares this fantastic food. I hope it's as good as it looks. Too bad you can't try it at home. The air-conditioned vessel offers a unique culinary experience, accommodating up to 250 people. Throughout the cruise, you can step onto the deck and enjoy Dubai by night. Yeah, really, really nice. In the south of the city, you find the Dubai Marina with the adjacent Jumeirah Beach Residences JBR. This district is one of the most visited tourist areas of Dubai. So you know that we're talking about alternative venues around town. This is one of them. This is JBR sure. uh, Walk. It is uh, a new development. Um, just giving people the opportunity to get outside again, whether that be for uh, health and fitness benefits or just to spend time with the family. You've got the beach, uh, you've got those fitness facilities, and you've also got all sorts of food and beverage. Absolutely, it looks great because you can just go to the beach here and then you can pop up and have lunch. Um, do a lot of families come here? Massive family uh, emphasis down here. There's something basically for everyone, you know. 
uh, and every demographic as well. So it's one of those environments that gets very, very busy at the weekend. It gets very busy in the evening mm -hmm. as well. And it just complements the lifestyle here. Not far from JBR, you can find Dubai Marina with its 1.5 square kilometers. It is the largest aquatic sports and residential project in the world. So welcome to Dubai Marina, uh, again in the heart of the city. I mean, JBR is literally just over there sure. where we've been. And here we are, boats, people, houses, perfect. Fantastic, it looks like a great place to live as well. Yeah, interesting because all of these things here are residential. So imagine having that as your view every single day. I'd love it. And are you going to take me out on one of the boats? Uh, well, my boat is obviously uh, under maintenance at the moment, but I'll see what we can do. This part of the city has mainly emerged in the last 10 years. It demonstrates how Dubai is able to achieve the impossible in record time. The sky is the limit, and you can really feel that here. So, coffee time. How do you fancy a camel milk cappuccino? Camel milk? <laughs> wow, that sounds interesting. Yeah? Cheers. It's good. It's yeah. good. It's different than I thought it would be, but um, it's nice. Yeah, and it's got great health benefits as well, camel milk, well proven. So. It's a guilt-free coffee. What should we call it? It's a, uh, it's a, it's a camel chino, isn't it? A camel chino. I like that. A capamel. <laughs> Naturally, all these beautiful yachts attract a lot of attention here in the Dubai Marina. It's wonderful to be cruising inside the marina like this. I couldn't think of a better way to spend the afternoon. You don't have to spend millions to be able to sail on a yacht. You can also charter one through Arabian Adventures. You can hire a boat including a captain and, if necessary, other staff members. Cheers. <laughs> I could get used to this life. Jebel Ali is a district on the outskirts of Dubai. You perhaps wouldn't expect it, but this district is full of surprises. The Jebel Ali Wildlife Sanctuary is an oasis of calm in the midst of hectic Dubai. So we're here at the Jebel Ali Wildlife Sanctuary. It's a very interesting place because a lot of people who visit Dubai or even live in Dubai don't get to see this often. Uh, so one important plant that you find over here is the mangrove, which releases a lot more oxygen than a regular plant and it takes five times more carbon dioxide than a regular plant and releases oxygen back into the air. Not to mention all the uh, wildlife that you can find over here too. It's very impressive and I believe there's school children coming here in universities and they're helping to preserve Dubai from here. The school children actually come here to help them clean the mangrove because there's an algae that covers the mangrove and it could kill it. So they, uh, they come here on a regular basis on school trips or university trips and they contribute to cleaning these plants. And in terms of maintaining this, how is it maintained? Because there's an awful lot happening in Dubai. You know, it's nice to see something like this happening. Well, they have a sponsor on board, the Commercial Bank of Dubai, and it's great that uh, an organization uh, realizes that, you know, a place like this needs help and support. It's important for the future of uh, the UAE, you know, to have these places. You come back here and see what Dubai used to look like back in the days. It's so nice to see the animals in their natural environment. Nice, very nice. The Al-Fahidi Historic District is one of the oldest heritage sites in Dubai. When you take an Arabian Adventures walking tour through the narrow lanes, you are transported back in time. So Maria, can you tell me a little bit about this area we're in now? Yes, with pleasure. We are in Bastakia, and Bastakia it consists of houses like this one, where the people used to live in the past, now converted in the kind of uh, galleries and museums. So after showing you here this uh, area of Bastakia, we can look to the other side, where we have uh, modern Dubai, and I will take you around. Great, I'd love to see it. Let's go. Do you know what we have here up? No, what are they? It's the wind towers. You can see a couple of them. They were used in the past as a kind of an air condition, funneling the wind 
into the homes located below, and then the home located below was the coolest one in the house. And the family would gather there because it was cool. Nowadays, we have plenty of electricity to survive our hot summers using the modern air condition. Ten years ago, the old Bastakia district was completely renovated and restored to its former glory. In this district, you will now find many art galleries, museums and charming cafes. Here, you will also find tourist highlights such as the Al Fahidi Fort and the Dubai Museum. Well, Loda, here we have the National Museum of Dubai. As you can see, it is a fort and everybody can visit the museum and it is very uh, informative. Then there you can experience the whole story of Dubai. And it's still very well preserved today, Maria. Indeed, it is very, very well preserved, but to be very honest with you, this is just part of the museum. There is a lot more to see in this. Great, well, thank you, Maria, for showing me around. It was my pleasure, my dear. And you have plenty more to see in Dubai. I look forward to seeing it. The Dubai Museum offers a lively image of the history of the city. It shows how, in a very short time, Dubai grew from a small fishing village into the center of the Arabic world. Here you can have a look at all the old equipment that people used in the past. Now I'm going to have a look at the history of Dubai. Part of the museum that's interesting is learning how the local people survived back in the day in the harsh desert conditions. Of course, Dubai was famous for pearl diving back in the day, and it's hard to imagine that these divers often stayed underwater for up to three minutes wearing only a nose clip. Imagine that. Have you ever been out to the desert before? No, I haven't. Well, I'm going to take you on an adventure. You ready for it? I am. Sounds like fun. All right, let's go. Thank you. If you wish to get away from the city life, Dubai is surrounded by a very spectacular area, the desert. Accompanied by an Arabian adventures guide, Lorda and Marwan drive into the desert in a 4x4. In no time, they are surrounded by a unique and wonderful world of sand. And they are fortunate enough to spot a couple of inhabitants. survive here in the past because it looks like very harsh conditions to live in. Well, it's not easy. The sun can be really harsh uh, out here in the desert, but the the Bedouins used to find ways to just survive mm -hmm. using the camels for transportation, camel for their milk, falconry for hunting, uh, and just dig wells just to get water as well. But, you know, as UAE nationals, we're always very proud of the Bedouins and how they survived. Uh, in the desert. I don't see the Bedouins living here anymore. I think they've moved over closer to the city, but uh, we always come back here to reminisce those times and sometimes just to get away uh, and see this beautiful scenery over I'm here. I'm sure it's so peaceful as well. They continue on their way. Fortunately, the driver knows what route to take. Could you take a picture of me, Marwan? I think my friends will be jealous. Yeah, of course. This would be great for Instagram. One hand up. One hand like that. All the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I've got some good pictures. Your oh, friends are going to be so jealous. My friends are going to be jealous. I think I'm going to send it to them now. Wow, it's a great picture. Thank you. So, Marwan, what other activities can we do here in the desert? Well, there's lots to do. You can go sandboarding, you can go sand duning. Uh, you know, there's a lot of falconry shows, you can ride a camel, but one thing I highly recommend you try is, especially you, uh, Lorda, you know, you're all glamorous and you know, I'm sure you like uh, camping, so one thing that you could do over here is called glamping, all right? It's glamorous camping at night in the desert. Sounds right up my street. After an exciting trip, this beautiful day comes to an end with a magnificent sunset over the desert.
you can spend the night in the desert with Arabian adventures to get an idea about what life used to be like for the Bedouins. The Bedouins lived in tents made from goat or camel hair, but wow, this is quite a bit different. Welcome to my home for the evening. This is certainly what they call glamorous camping, glamping. An overnight stay like this wouldn't be complete without traditional food and drink. Lorda is sharing this special experience along with a few other guests. Many families from Dubai also spend a night or two in the desert just to relax in nature. Now this is an experience you cannot miss. Jumeirah is one of the most beloved districts in Dubai. Before the man-made islands existed, this was a favorite spot for a villa beside the sea. Jumeirah is still a popular place to live and shop and to take advantage of beach life. So Tom, can you tell us a little bit more about Jumeirah here? Yeah, it's one of the traditional residential districts of the city, bang in the middle uh, of Dubai. As you can see, you've got the Burj Al Arab yeah, just Burj behind us, uh, the Palm is just there, and then of course, uh, the Burj Khalifa just in front of us as well. And traditionally, as I said, a very residential area. There was also a lot of uh, infrastructure here for the fishermen, the fishing industry. Uh, but now in the sort of modern take of the city, there's a lot more take to outdoor living, outdoor lifestyle, a healthier lifestyle as well. Be they tourists, as you can see, taking advantage of the uh, good weather, uh, but also residents, you know, people who live in this city who can use this as part and parcel of their daily routine. It's great, maybe we can join them. I, I was hoping you'd say that because I do feel a little bit overdressed on well, a day like this. Well, we're slightly, you know? slightly overdressed. You brought any sun cream? So one of the things I love about this area now is obviously it's promoting outdoor lifestyle, and that might be health, but equally there's food and beverage options are plenty as well from the beach canteens, the little concessions opening up, uh, and that's encouraging a lot of new um, restaurant owners uh, and a lot of producers to get involved as well. All sorts of options, a lot of healthy lifestyle options and some that you have to eat healthily very quickly as well. Absolutely, and they're melting on us, so we should probably <laughs> eat them much quicker. Jumeirah has more to offer than the beach. On the Jumeirah Beach Road, which runs parallel to the coast, you will find a number of landmarks, such as the Jumeirah Grand Mosque, Mercato Mall, and several extravagant hotels. This is one of the reasons I like coming down here. It just reminds you how lucky you are to live in this city. And I think it also sort of proves, doesn't it? A lot of people don't realise that you have these sort of opportunities. You want to go out for a nice night? It's on your doorstep. So. Absolutely. It looks a little bit like Venice here as well, doesn't it? A little it? bit like Venice? Well, enjoy your evening. Absolutely. Well. Salute. Salute. Thank you. It's not the first thing that you might think of, but it is really possible skiing in Dubai. Within the Mall of the Emirates, there is an indoor ski slope, also with many snow activities for non-skiers. It's strange to think that the desert is on the other side of these walls, and I'm walking here in the snow in minus four degrees. Wow, that was really fun. And by the way, all the skis and the ski clothing are included in the pass. There is a ski slope and a kid's snow park. If you are an experienced skier, you can even ski down the longest indoor black diamond slope in the world. Wow, 
Wow. Good boy, Speedy. Wow, look how sweet they are. And not only that, they're actually the fastest swimming birds in the world. As with all winter sports, a part that cannot be ignored is the apre ski, and you have that here too. And here in the apre, it's nice and warm. Hello. 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 Hello, ma'am. Let's go see Dubai, Tom. Let's go for it. Why not? Tom and Lorda take the city sightseeing hop on, hop off bus to explore the city. And it is good to know that a Dao ferry ride is also included in the bus pass. The trip to Palm Jumeirah is quite impressive. So yeah, just cruising down Shadeside Road. And when I first got here, what, about 15 years ago, this, uh, these were the skyscrapers that I was looking up at all right. But wow, how could it get any taller? Yeah, it's fantastic. But can you imagine what it's going to look like in another 30 years, Tom? I'm sure we were not going to recognize it's it. It's interesting. Look, that's Emirates Towers Hotel, the hotel and the business office. And that's still an iconic building. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, Tom, this is really the showcase of Dubai, really, the palm. Yeah, it certainly is one of them, Palm Jumeirah. Um, a great concept. A lot of people call it the eighth wonder of the world. It's been delivered. And when you take into account this, the trunk, and the fronds, it's adding an extra 70-plus kilometres of coastline to the city. It's really impressive, isn't it? <laughs> it's just stunning. It really is. Uh, we're on the main trunk area at the moment. We're heading up to Atlantis, right at the peak of the uh, palm. So you'll start seeing the fronds any minute where you find the villas. Most of this is sort of apartments, residential, and a few hotels. It's not a bad place to live, really, is it? No, it's a, it's a special place, and a lot of people are very lucky to live here. House prices, understandably, high in this part of the city. Uh, and as you see by some of the villas in just a little while, some big old properties. So do you have a villa here? I do not have a villa here. It's something to work toward. I think it is. <laughs> Unfortunately, Lorda's trip has come to an end. I've had a great time here. Dubai is a city full of extremes. It's large, it's hectic, and it's constantly moving. It's full of surprises and cultural highlights. See you next time.